Once upon a time, that's how these things usually start, yes? A sister took pity on her brilliant, prolific, and incredible brother. She had somehow gotten it in her head that he might be lonely, or at least that's what she claims. And so, on a perfectly fine, productive Friday afternoon, the sister picked up her son from the Elwood Academy for Boys and dropped the aggravating child off on my, uh, the, the brother's doorstep. Now you, I mean, the boy, had visited Quadrangle Manor on a few occasions. Each time was complete with a grand entrance from the brother, who was in fact a professor and inventor with a profound and soaring intellect. With each visit, the inventions he exhibited became more slick and cutting edge. The boy eagerly awaited the revealing of the professor's latest contrivance, but this, the most captivating of visits, started a bit differently. Well, let's see here. If I configure the trans-dimensional velocity regulator at approximately 0 0.887 microseconds past the... Oh, you're here? I have the most incredible invention to show you this visit. Unfortunately, I'm a bit... <laughs> indisposed at the moment. If you take your luggage into the foyer, I will join you as soon as I can. that. I believe I told you to bring your luggage with you. Apparently children of this generation aren't the best at listening. Oh, good. That should be a safety release for the door up there somewhere. Now, where on earth did I put that? Wait a minute. Something isn't quite right here. Oh, no, 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 no! supposed to be here today no matter well judging from the current underwhelming amount of light in this room we're still on backup power my head is killing me it seems as though i now possess a rather large epidural hematoma a bump on the head do me and yourself a favor and head to the front hall there's a way to restart the power grid Last I remember, I was in the new technology sector, and then... I don't know. 
I do think the failsafe was tripped accidentally. Unfortunately, the front door will remain in lockdown until you can restore the power. If you head over to my office over on the left, you should be able to restart the manor's power grid. Throw that switch there. It should be the one. Well, that wasn't as effective as I'd hoped. You'll have to reactivate the generators in each sector in order to lift the current lockdown. Just, uh, take the glove in the box with you. I wish you could see my facial expression right now, as I am not pleased. is an early prototype of the interdimensional ship device or IDS device for short it's one piece of my latest invention that should come in handy get it you know because it's a glove <laughs> If you can access the generator at the back of each wing, we might be able to lift the lockdown on the rest of the house. It seems as if the breaker did unlock the blue wing. Well, I suppose you should start there first. There's something I must tell you. My latest invention has required me to make a few uh, adjustments to the house since the last time you barged in. Uh, I mean... Now, one of the topics that our family has been studying for several generations are rifts existing between various dimensions. I've been able to develop a power source that will channel enough energy into one of these dimensional rifts that it can be widened enough to travel through. The glove controls the power source, which allows you to travel to whichever dimension has rifts in the area. You won't have control over the ability to switch dimensions yet. Just be patient. This door is using one of my inventions, the repetitive, periodic, articulating day, Or a drinking bird. Except that it's far more advanced. Uh, well, because your glove is an early prototype, it has a few limitations in terms of dimension accessibility and the distance it can be from a receptacle in order to function. This is such an early experiment with dimensional shifting, so I decided to have it triggered remotely with the drinking bird. Instead of operating a door, the bird will trigger a dimensional shift. There's an IDS battery in the machine that will power the dimensions, which in this case is a fluffy dimension. In addition to fluffy being embarrassingly adorable, it's also rather useful because everything is ten times lighter than normal. Thank you. 
Though that looks like a regular scale, it is in fact a portable kinetic mass to electricity converter. There's that lovely bird again. Sometimes I call him Desmond. Something to note. Since you're holding a version of the IDS device, you, in fact, are not you in an alternate dimension. Let me try that again. You remain constant. So no matter the dimension, your mass, shape, speed, and trying personality remain the same. You should throw that IDS battery into the receptacle mounted on the wall. The receptacle is up on the second floor alcove. That receptacle will distribute the power source around the room, allowing you to now use your IDS device to switch dimensions at your leisure. As I mentioned, dimensional rifts in the manor are magnified by the stabilizing energy from the IDS receptacle and batteries. This is what enables you to slip between dimensions when you're wearing the IDS glove. Ah! Dynamic Object Linear Ligation Interface. To you, a cloning device. I like my house just so. So I decided to add functionality to her to keep everything consistent. Oh, I'll need to tune that later. These are my own particular hybrid beams of carbon dioxide and neodymium dope yttrium aluminum garnet lasers using an alternating ray configuration. Gives them an extra kick. Unfortunately, the breaking of this glass is a necessary evil. Don't take that as permission to do it elsewhere. Just letting you know that you reset the glass. Thank you.
Oh, that uh, creature there is an interdimensional kinetic entity, or Ike. Stop for a minute and take a look at the painting. The machine I referred to as Dolly started out as a simple metal forge that had been in the family since medieval times. The original quadrangle suit of armor was actually constructed in this very forge. My great-grandfather modified the old forge so that if it had enough raw resources, it could craft steel objects autonomously. This predecessor to Dolly supplied all the materials needed to build the Underground Railroad. In case you're wondering, you turned on the fan. Please say that you don't need me to explain that to you. That's where that got to. That is a botched experiment of mine called the Awkward Noise Generator. There's got to be more around here somewhere. standard issue conveyor belts. So much easier than carrying things yourself. So I haven't discussed my location a whole lot, but it seems as if I'm in some sort of limbo. I think I may explore a bit and see what turns up.
You're not helping my headache right now. This room often gets rather sweltering in the summertime. Air circulation is very important. That still completely baffles me. Ah, oh, yes. With these specifications, you should be able to recreate several objects in the research and development lab adjacent to my office. This is one of the animals that Dolly cloned to rather, well, intriguing results. Ah, you've moved on to a part of the manor where another type of dimensional rift is accessible. This is the Gravid Wolfram dimension, or Heavy. 